Um, hi. All right, hello guys. Welcome back. Today we are back again on the Shadowhunter series. Specifically, we are talking about the Lost Book of the White, which, funny story, I've been literally calling it this entire time, like 12 books, whatever it is, the Lost Book of White. And then literally in the last like couple chapters of this book, I read it as the Lost Book of the White. And I was like, what the heck? She made a typo. How embarrassing. And then I like closed the book and I'm like, oh, it's always been the Lost Book of the White. And I just didn't read that. It was like a Mandela effect moment. I guess I'm just not very perceptive. Anyways, yes, we are talking about this book. This is my favorite cover of any Shadowhunter series book thus far. I love the aesthetic of these. The official like covers are different. Um, you can kind of flip this inside out. This is the actual, I don't know which one's official, but yeah, this is like the actual cover, I guess. And then the red scrolls has a different color cover as well. But these to me are just so aesthetically pleasing. Um, I'm not a big fan of books that have like faces on them, like real faces. Like I like when it's something more cartoony or just something more like subtle left to the imagination. I don't know. I don't like to have like a real face looking at me on a cover. I like to just imagine, but yeah, these are so beautiful. I am absolutely obsessed with this series, this Eldest Curses series within the Shadowhunter series. I love Alec and Magnus. I love them individually, I love them together, I love how they bounce off of each other, their personalities, their relationship, everything about it. I love these books and this book, I love just the same. Um, I do just kinda wanna talk about it, give all of my thoughts as always, ramble a little bit, but that's what you guys are here for, so yeah, let's get into it. So if you guys have been following me on the Shadowhunters journey, you know that before this book came um, Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy. That's what I read before that, I'm following this recommended reading list um, if you guys watched that video, you know I didn't love that book. I didn't really understand its need. Like, I just felt like it was a lot of fluff and that it was really boring. Um, we figured out pretty much in the first, like, couple pages of this book why you needed to have read that book first. Um, Alec and Magnus just have their child in this book. Uh, their little abandoned warlock baby that was left at the academy that they end up naming Max Lightwood, which I still think is very confusing because, you know, it was Alec's little brother and you just have to remember now that that's their son. Anyways, um, yeah, they just have the baby in this book. There's zero explanation of like where they got it. So if you hadn't read that, you'd be very confused. Um, so there's that. But yes, okay, so this book opens up. I have a minor bone to pick with Cassandra Clare. Like, I don't, I understand if you write like a 20 book series and you know, you keep adding to it. Like, obviously I don't think she realized when she wrote this series, like how big of a hit it was gonna be and probably didn't realize along the way like, hey, I'm gonna wanna back, go back and like tell this story and this story and this story. So I get that like things aren't gonna completely line up and be perfect. There's gonna be some plot holes, I get it. But this book opens up, right? And we had thought that Ragnar Fell was dead, right? In City of Glass. Clary and Sebastian go to like visit Ragnar to find the Lost Book of the White and it, Magnus is there and he's like, oh, Ragnar's dead, whatever. My oldest friend, I'm so sad. So we just think Ragnar's dead. We never really hear about him again for like the rest of Mortal Instruments. Don't think anything of it. And then at the end of Red Scrolls, we see that um, like Shinyan has Ragnar like captive and is like, everybody thinks you're dead, haha. -ha. So it's like, oh, okay, so now he's like alive again, okay. Like, Shinyun has captured him. So it makes it seem like at the end of Red Scrolls that Magnus still believes he is dead, but that he's not dead, okay. So this book opens up and it's like a whole, I guess, flashback to City of Glass. It's like right before Clary and Sebastian show up and Magnus is like at Ragnar's house in Idris. And Ragnar explains that he's going to fake his death to Magnus because um, Samael, who is Samael, I think that's how you say it, one of the princes of hell, greater demons, essentially husband to Lilith. He is trying to come back and because greater demons, once you kill them, they don't really die. Like they come back every few hundred years, whatever. Samael is gonna want Ragnar to help him because he's like the demon of dimensions and Ragnar's like the best and oldest warlock at creating portals and dimensions and things. So he's like, I'm gonna fake my death so that Samael can't take over the world. And Mag Magnus is just like, Okay, sure, I'm on board with that. So it's like now you're like, oh, Magnus has known this whole time that Ragnar 
faked his death. It's just like she couldn't, it's like she couldn't decide what she wanted to do with Ragnar and that maybe in the beginning Ragnar wasn't meant to really be a character and then she decided later on, like sure, let's bring him back. Like I don't, I don't know what else to do. Which, whatever, I get it, like things like that are gonna happen, but yeah, it's just kind of like all over the place. It's kind of like, okay, like make up your mind, dude. <laughs> like, is this character important? Is he not? Is he dead? Is he not? Does Magnus know that he's dead or not? I don't know, that was just my take on it. I thought it was kind of weird, but yeah. So like, Magnus and Alec are in their apartment and Shinyeon appears with Ragnar and <laughs> Shinyeon's freaking weird, right? Like we learned from Red Scrolls, like she is a warlock and she like doesn't have an identity, does like wants to just belong, feel like she has a purpose, a family. So she before was trying to serve Asmodeus and now she's like, I am serving some ale and she has taken Ragnar and she has this like pointy weapon called a Svinthorn and she's poked herself in the heart with it and Ragnar and I guess once you poke, get poked in the heart with it three times, you're now like loyal to some ale. Okay, so her and Ragnar have been poked with it. They've already kind of like they're already loyal, but you have to be poked with it three times, so she pokes Magnus with it, so his power, it makes you more powerful, and all this stuff, um, but, so yeah. Essentially, they show up, mess things up, and then poke Ragnar and disappear, and... And they totally steal the Lost Book of the White from Magnus, which is the whole reason they showed up to his apartment, kind of the point of the whole book, even though I forgot to mention it here, haha, <laughs> anyways... This kind of ends up turning into a Mortal Instruments part seven, eight? How many Mortal Instruments books are there? Part seven, so there are six Mortal Instruments books. So yeah, it was really cool. This book literally had every character from Mortal Instruments in it. After Shinyeon shows up and she stabs Magnus with the sword thing, sword, pointy sword thing, I don't know what you call it, a Sventhorn. Um, they basically enlist the help of everybody. Clary, Jace, Isabel, Simon, who's now a Shadowhunter, which, Okay, we got his whole backstory in Shadowhunter Academy, cool. Um, he shows up, they bring Max to uh, Maris to watch, and they're like, okay, we need to find Shinyan. They do a tracking spell, not tracking spell, tracking rune, and they figure out that they're in Shanghai. So the whole Red Scrolls of Magic was kind of set in Paris, so that's why it's got like the Eiffel Tower and all that, and this one is set in Shanghai. So it's like a very cool, I just love the aesthetic. I love that these are kind of like, side story spin-offs where it's like shadow hunters on vacation like I just I love the vibes of it I love I love everything about it I think it's so cool but yeah so this story is mostly set in Shanghai which was really cool for me but also like just being a very uneducated person that doesn't know anything about like Asian culture it was very um, confusing at times just because like I don't like the names of things the names of people um, it was it got it was very hard to kind of like keep up and follow for me but I did I really like thoroughly enjoyed it like I thought it was super cool to just get a totally new perspective like shadow hunters in China like it was it was very cool um, but yeah we end up seeing Jim Jim Carstairs, his family is there. Um, they're from this elite shadow hunter family and they enlist their help to track down um, Shinyan and Ragnar and essentially find out that Samael is trying to take over Dayu, which is like this dimension that this famous demon from Shanghai used to occupy and yeah, they end up, whatever, going to hell again, casual. So yes, they go to Dayu and they essentially figure out that it is like the mirrored version of Shanghai, so it's like everything is backwards, so that's kind of cool, like them trying to navigate the place and figure out where they're going. Um, there's all these different dimensions within Dayu, it's like all the different levels of hell, so they all kind of get split up in the beginning, Simon's disappeared, and we end up finding out that Samael has Simon and he's torturing him because Simon was responsible for Lilith dying and Lilith is like his lover, scandalous. Um, but yeah, Shinyan and Ragnar are there and they have like, as your power grows from the Sventhorn, you start to like morph and look crazy. So Ragnar has like these crazy horns now and Shinyan has like these super long like limbs. Like it was very weird. Um, yeah, and they're obviously very concerned. Oh, I didn't even mention this. So yeah, you find out from Shinyan that Magnus basically, he has to get, if you don't get poked the third time with the Sventhorn, you die. Like you essentially have to like pledge your loyalty to Samael, get poked the third time or you die. So of course it's like, oh my God, you're gonna die. What are we gonna do? They end up getting these swords from this 
fa these fairy smiths in the shadow market of Shanghai before they go there. Sorry, I'm jumping around. Which I think that this is gonna be a big part of Ghosts of the Shadow Market, which is I think the next, no, Dark Artifices and then that. Um, so yeah, that market was very cool to see. That's very like exclusive to Shanghai. They have very good relations with the downworlders there. Um, so yeah, they end up getting these swords that are supposed to help them, like Magnus and Alec each have one. It's like a white one and a black one, um, called like the black and the white impermanence. Imperman um, so that's supposed to help them fight Samael, but Magnus ends up using them because they're technically like gods that are like trapped in the swords. <laughs> this was quite the story. It was a lot to wrap my head around. That's why I'm saying it's kind of confusing because it's just a lot of like folklore and just confusing names and stories and stuff that I just didn't, you know, it, it's hard to like, <laughs> especially in like a short, it's not that long of a book and it's just like one concise story when like all this like brand new information is thrown at you it's kind of like whoa it took me a while to read this book because it was just it was a very like i don't want to say a heavy book it wasn't like serious heavy but you just had to like absorb a lot of information so yeah magnus ends up using those to like heal ragnar of the spin thorn and then magnus and alec end up using their their um linking rune that clary came up with in City of Glass again so that they could like share their powers and that's how they end up kind of defeating them. Um, Alex stabs himself with the spin thorn and that like he, he should have died but because he was sharing Magnus's power it was like it didn't kill him and then yeah okay world is saved but not necessarily because basically Shinyan ends up like stabbing herself again with the power that has left Magnus and now she's like this giant huge monster thing because she's pissed because Samael's like whatever Shinyan we don't need Magnus like he's not really a part of the greater plan and now she's just super pissed off because she's crazy and she's like I hate all of you like none of you take this seriously like what is wrong with you Magnus like why you're a warlock like you should you know the power of demons like wow, let's rule the world like she's mad so she like becomes this big giant thing and she's like Samael like you're weak like well, I pledge my loyalty to myself now because no like no one I follow is ever strong enough to carry out what needs to be done blah 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 so now she's like this big giant monster thing and she just like flops away disappears um and Samael also kind of like goes away and they end up getting out of hell hell die whatever so world is like saved for the moment like Ragnar's good everybody's Gucci um <laughs> what was that but yeah so now I very much left open that there's going to be another book also the little like um prologue is that the end yeah epilogue is beginning prologue is end right or did I make that up you know what I'm trying to say at the end you see Samael and he's meeting with the other princes of hell Asmodeus like all of the other ones and they're like essentially let's team up and like we need to contact lucifer so it's like oh shoot like this next book is gonna be wild which i'm, I'm excited because i really thought i was like i feel like this is just gonna be like a two-part like two and done sort of thing and i love this series so much and it's kind of cool because even though like mortal instruments is over infernal devices is personally my favorite i haven't gotten to dark artifices or last hours yet but i'm obsessed with infernal devices but mortal and what am i trying to say like i like mortal instruments but it's not like my favorite part of like the overarching series but at the same time once i finished mortal instruments i was kind of like dang like we're not gonna get to see like jace again like i love jace so much obviously so i'm like dang we're kind of like not gonna get to really see these characters anymore like that's kind of sad you know like i don't know kind of made me feel like i was i was breaking up with them but this book like i said all of our favorite characters from mortal instruments was in it so Maybe that's what the next one will be like too. Like maybe they'll all be in it again. So we still keep getting our, our Jason, our Clary, our Isabel, our Simon, all of that. So yeah, this was the rambliest, worst <laughs> video I've done so far. I'm about to go um, camping for the next week with my family. And I'm like, crap, I have to film this before I go. Cause I've already started another book. And I'm like, I have to do these while this is like fresh on my mind and get it out there and talk about it or I'll forget about it. Anyways, I just wanted to make sure I got it out there. Gotta, gotta keep you guys updated with my thoughts. Essentially, I really liked this book. Um, found it kind of confusing at parts. Um, think that there are some kind of like plot holes here and there, but I mean, the story's good. It's a little goofy, but overall I love, I love Malik. I love 
their whole story. I love the vibes of these covers. I just keep holding them up and looking at them because they're so pretty. But um, yeah, if you guys read this book, let me know what you think. This is a more current one. I think it only came out in like 2020, so yeah. That's it. <laughs> I will talk to you guys very soon. I am switching over, taking a little mini break from Shadowhunters again, just because I feel like I'm letting myself get burned out and I don't want that to happen. It's kind of my fault too because I started watching the series on TV and I'm like, you're giving yourself too much, you're overloading. So I've taken a little break. I'm currently reading uh, Crave by Tracy Wolf, which I only got because I thought it was like a Twilight ripoff. And so far I really like it. So look out for that review. That'll be coming next, but yeah. That is it. I'll talk to you guys very soon.